The Shooting Range. In this episode, Pages of History, The First, Grom, Battle Pass, Completing New Season Tasks, and Metal Beasts, Record Fox 3 Packer. The battle for air superiority in War Thunder is on. Today's Metal Beast is one of the main contenders for the title of the best top fighter in the game. Please welcome the American Eagle, the F-15C MSIP-2. On the outside, there's very little difference between the early modification and this one, but you can still spot some. The power plant is a twin turbojet engine with a total afterburning power of almost 17,000 kilogram forces. It's actually lower than on the predecessor, but that engine was dropped due to low operational life. It's pretty hard to find the difference in flight performances of various F-15 modifications anyways. The Eagle can't boast impressive maneuverability, but its speed remains on top of the list. Now, flying fast is great for a fighter, but a true top also needs good firepower. The new F-15 can bring no less than eight active radar homing missiles. Those are going to be the backbone of your loadouts in most situations, allowing the aircraft to truly shine in long-range aerial combat. The best way to use these missiles is pretty simple. Gain some altitude and switch your radar into track while scan mode. Find some targets and launch a few missiles at them. Your aircraft's radar will need to guide them for some time, which is shown by the dashed line on the indicator. So you need to keep flying a bit more after the launch. Once the missile's own homing device locks onto the target, the line between it and your plane turns into a solid one. Now you can turn away and retreat to a safe range. Sometime later, you can repeat the attempt. However, your enemy can also launch active radar homing missiles at you. Thankfully, this aircraft comes with a radar warning system that'll give you an alarm. If you hear it, it's best to interrupt your attack and perform the 3-9 maneuver. The F-15 isn't the best choice for close combat, but sometimes you simply have no choice. Should that happen, you can use the AIM-9M missiles. They offer good maneuverability, jamming resistance, and stealth launches. The Eagle can't boast a large choice of ground attack weapons, but the GBU-8 guided bombs are pretty decent. With good speed and suitable weather, you can toss them a couple dozen kilometers away. And since many anti-air gunners relax while waiting for a comfy target right above their head, such a bomb can become a nasty surprise. And the main bonus? Even equipped for CAS, the F-15 remains an amazing air superiority fighter. They say there's nothing more permanent than temporary. The military industry is no exception. Even more so, the military is where temporary things often put down roots for decades. That's exactly what happened to the cannon of the first Soviet infantry vehicle. The Grom found itself a victim of this pattern. Soon after the end of World War II, the Soviet armed forces began to look for something in between an armored personnel carrier and a light tank. The army was using more and more vehicles, so it was time to think about new strategies for employing infantry together with the armor. It took almost 10 years to reach the conclusion that the army wanted a light, amphibious machine that could transport troops, hit tanks, and destroy enemy fortifications. The latter made great demands of the main caliber. Long-barreled cannons had recoil that was too high, while short-barreled ones were either too weak or too expensive. Finally, Vyacheslav Silin, an engineer from the city of Tula, created a suitable weapon. Although it wasn't originally meant for combat vehicles, his SPG-9 recoilless grenade launcher was made for the infantry. Its design allowed the gun to hit enemy vehicles up to 1,300 meters away. It used high explosive munitions, so the range was mostly limited by the ballistics. A reworked variant of this gun was named the 2A-28 Grom and first installed onto several IFV prototypes. 
later being put onto the Object 765, also known as the BMP-1. It satisfied all the requirements of the military and could even penetrate the front armor of most contemporary tanks. Nevertheless, issues with the Grom began almost on day one. The loading mechanism originally installed on infantry fighting vehicles developed a bad reputation among the soldiers for being more dangerous than convenient and was soon discovered to be unnecessary due to the low mass of the ammo. Later BMPs removed the autoloader in favor of traditional manual loading. The gun also had pretty unique ballistics, and only a well-trained, experienced gunner could hit a target a kilometer away. In theory, a crew could use the 9M14 Malutka missiles for longer ranges, but those actually took even more effort and skill. The next development was a long-barreled, stabilized version of the Grom called Zarnitsa, but it stalled. Meanwhile, reality pushed the performance requirements even higher. Helicopters joined the ranks as new low-flying aircraft, and that meant the army needed a weapon with a higher rate of fire and even wider elevation angles. The mass-produced BMP-2 got the 2A-42, a rapid-firing 30mm autocannon, so the anti-tank Grom gun should have joined history. But life had its own way. The USSR produced so many combat vehicles it couldn't just discard them all. Besides, the guns shared quite a few design features with the anti-tank SPG-9 Kapyo. That's why the BMP-1 saw extensive use in service with numerous nations, even in the 21st century. Despite the gun feeling completely out of its time, after all, it became outdated after just 10 years in the ranks, it still remains a significant force on the battlefields. The skilled marksman battle pass is already available, so we'd like to talk about its challenges. Let's see what the new season brings to our players. But first, we'd like to remind you that all battle pass challenges require a vehicle of rank 3 and above. The first challenge, skeet shooting, can be completed by destroying 150 enemy vehicles. While there are modes with higher average frag numbers, we'd recommend that you choose what you like best. It's always easier to finish tasks using your favorite vehicle in your favorite mode. The second challenge is right on target. To complete it, you need to earn 10,000 points in ground missions, finishing them in a tank destroyer. All points you score count, including those that you earn on other vehicles, even aircraft. Challenge number three is dash to victory. Win 35 missions while destroying at least a single enemy in each. If you want to complete it faster, you can play realistic air battles where there's only a single spawn. Using high rank jet fighters arguably makes for the fastest battles. Of course, you don't have to play air battles to complete this challenge. If you go for other modes, we recommend you use a tried and true set of vehicles to improve your chances of winning. Many of the tasks have overlapping durations, so you can complete multiple at once. For instance, there's a whole week when you can do all three first tasks at once. Using this approach might significantly speed up your progress. The name of the fourth challenge speaks for itself. Taking the pedestal means scoring top three in your team in 15 missions. Use your most favorite vehicle to show your best performance. The next challenge is close combat. To finish this one, you'll need to destroy 10 enemy ground vehicles at a range of less than 50 meters. We recommend that you pick medium rank vehicles with thick armor that allow you to push enemy defenses and destroy them at point blank distance. And of course, remember to pick the best suitable location. Getting up close and personal is much easier in an urban location than in a large open field. Challenge number six is play high. Time to fuel your aircraft and get it ready for some close air support. This challenge needs you to destroy enemy vehicles with bombs and rockets or missiles. Ten for both types. Note that rockets and missiles are grouped, and both conventional and guided munitions count. To make this challenge smoother, pick an aircraft with a ballistic computer. And the last challenge for today is Long Spear. Destroy ten enemy vehicles with torpedoes to complete it. By the way, 
you can use both ships and aircraft. There are lots of great boats and destroyers for this challenge, but we'd like to recommend those that can use the Japanese Type 93 torpedoes. This type of munition can offer great range and amazing velocity, giving you much better chances for successful hits. We'll get back to the remaining challenges in a future episode. Meanwhile, it's time to answer some questions from the comments. The first question was sent by a player called Cooked Demon. In my eye it, how should I turn fight things if they keep breaking my wing? Hi, Demon. If you want to keep your wing intact at high speeds, make your maneuvers smoother by using the mouse. You can also try turning vertically to bleed more speed during the maneuver. Squirrel asks, if I buy two premium vehicle packs, both 20 days of premium, will they be 40 days in total or less days in total? Hello, Squirrel. When you buy multiple packs, all your gold, silver eagles, and days of premium are accumulated. Another question comes from just some random guy, 22. What's the F4S best used for in ARB? Hey there! This Phantom is an amazing fighter, especially if you focus on using the radar-guided AIM-7F missiles. Hispar writes, How do you shoot with one gun on the M50? Hi, Hispar. If you press the fire from the main caliber gun key once, the M50 will only shoot from a single barrel. If you press the key multiple times or hold it, the gun will shoot from all of its six barrels in succession. And the last comment for today was written by Rodolfo Hernandez. For the next arsenal, the best loadouts for F-14A and F-14B Tomcats. Hey Rodolfo, that's a great suggestion. Thanks. You'll see it in one of the next episodes. That's it for today. You've been watching The Shooting Range by Gaijin Entertainment, and the next episode will premiere the following Sunday at 4 p.m. GMT or noon Eastern Time. Subscribe and click the bell if you don't want to miss our next videos. Don't forget to pet your friendly M22, leave a like, share your thoughts and comments, and see you next week.